Also, I'm confident we will have plenty of valid reasons to dislike Bogus, Bunts, and Bean, but let's not forget that the true villain is whomever decided to point out that appearance has something to do with their horribleness. Indian Paintbrush, Regency Enterprises, and American Empirical. Now, why do they seem so familiar? Hmm, maybe it's because I just saw their f***ing logos 30 seconds ago! Between Disney's animated Robin Hood, the Fox and the Hound, and Tales from Sonic the Hedgehog, you can see why Wes Anderson was fed up with foxes being misrepresented in pop culture as lovable creatures instead of the bastards they truly are. To that end, he opened this movie strong with an immediate apple eating, so we would at least be certain this fox was an asshole. Also, said apple is thrown away after only two damn bites. Barely a minute in, and I fear Mr. Fox is already beyond redemption. Should we go through the hole under the horse fence or climb the rail over the bridle path? Well, I guess the horse fence would be a little safer. Well, but the bridle path puts us right out next to the squab shack. Okay. The original title of this movie was going to be Misogynist Mr. Fox, but it just seemed a little too on the nose, so they decided to weave the theme directly into this marriage instead. Don't worry, I've been stealing birds for a living since before I could trot. I can confidently say that no one is worried about Mr. Fox's bird-stealing abilities, but rather his choice in wearing a corduroy coat over a carpet shirt over actual fur. Of course this fox is making questionable choices. His brain is being cooked. Moving the trash can forward to the front porch makes sense for us, the viewer, because we now have something interesting to watch. But in reality, if the foxes had just gone behind all these buildings, it would have saved them a lot of effort. What's that? What? I think it's a fox trap. How exactly does this trap work? It appears to be relying on the animal in question being smart enough to understand what this chain does, while also being stupid enough to pull it anyway. Which of course works on this occasion, but it really shouldn't have. If we're still alive tomorrow morning, I want you to find another line of work. Wouldn't it have been a better idea to share her pregnancy news and this very valid sentiment before they embarked on this highly dangerous squab game? Does anybody actually read my column? I have read this newspaper and I can confidently say I would rather read the lorem ipsum dummy text nonsense on WordPress templates. I'm sick. You're not sick. I have a temperature. You don't have a temperature. Kits. As Mrs. Fox paces back and forth whisking something in a bowl, I just want to point out that Mr. Fox's breakfast is already ready and sitting on the edge of the table. Why make him wait for his food when it's available to eat before it gets cold? Honey, I'm seven non-fox years old now. Unless foxes are the only species that measure age differently, saying non-fox ears is as helpful to me as saying non-human. Which metric is he referring to? Dog ears? Badger ears? Inception ears? Just say you're 42, damn it. I find this Cookie Monster-inspired destruction of the French toast to be delightful. But if they eat with their hands, what is the purpose of the three knives and one fork on the table? Also, who puts their tie on immediately before breakfast if you're going to eat like this? Apparently, spitting on the floor is some sort of quirky character trait for this kid. Fine, whatever. But did he have to do it with a mouthful of toothpaste? Mr. Fox must have realized he chopped off all the important information and took a detour to the shops to cut up another copy of the newspaper. Because this doesn't look anything like the clipping he cut out at the breakfast table. Skipping stone hearth, as you can see. Skipping stones for who? Those are massive stones that are far too big for forest creatures to skip across any surface. May I ask what you do for a living, Mr. Fox? I used to steal birds, but... No, I'm a newspaper man. Oh, sure, I've seen your byline. If you've read his work, then why did you feel the need to ask him what his job was? Or was this just to remind us what Fox used to do? I suppose we could have forgotten it was a whole 30 non-human minutes ago. This is Bogus, Bunce, and Bean, three of the meanest, nastiest, ugliest farmers in the history of this valley. Expositional Badger Attorney! Expo Badgerney? He eats three chickens every day for breakfast, lunch, supper, and dessert. That's 12 in total per diem. The average cooked chicken weighs three and a half pounds, so that's 42 pounds of chicken a day for about 40,000 calories total. I get exaggerating for comedic effect, but this man should be the size of a beluga whale or dead. Hey, I realize we're supposed to be hating on this f***er right now, but can we stop for a moment and respect the type of person who creates a floating bookshelf side table and affixes it unevenly to the wall with a bold middle finger to normal aesthetics? The local human children sing a kind of airy little rhyme about him. Here, listen to this. Wait, you just had that shit ready to go? Why does he have it recorded in the first place? I thought Badger from The Wind in the Willows was a sketchy motherfucker. But this asshole might have him beat. Either that or he's lived through this day so many times he knew exactly where this conversation was going. The cuss you are. The cuss am I? Are you cussing with me? No, you cussing with me. Don't cuss and point me. Replacing every cussing swear word with cuss is both cussing endearing and cussing hilarious. A medal and a sin removal to the mother cusser whose idea that was. Hey there, typing lady. Who said you could sneakily get up and shut the door that was open a few seconds ago in this scene? You get back to work, carpeted kitchens. Do you still feel poor? Less so. F*** you, man. You've got a beautiful wife, a kid, and a brand new treehouse thing. So what's with the lack of gratitude? Yes, I'm aware I just called a stop-motion fox beautiful, but she's voiced by Meryl Streep, and damn it, I'm only human. This convenient coupon. 
Also, the copy of the newspaper appears to be text from the book, and although I find the wink to the source material clever, having it placed in the paper where Mr. Fox would literally be reading future events of his life is a bit of a stretch. Do you mind if I slide my bedroll slightly out from under the train set? It's hard to sleep in that corkscrew position. Corkscrew must have an entirely different meaning in fox tongue, because Christofferson looks to be laying perfectly straight to me. I used to do this professionally, and I was very successful at it. I had to get out of it for personal reasons, but I've decided to secretly do one last big job on the sly. Ocean's Fox Team! Also, one last big job cliche. Bonus sin if it goes sideways in spectacular fashion. Let me just check here real quick. Yep. Master plan, phase one, side A. Seriously though, this is so much like an Ocean's movie. It's as if Danny's eventual death led him to be reincarnated as a fox who was forced to relive his past life in a stop-motion adventure of increasingly ridiculous farm heists. Does every species of animal have the same last name? If that's the case, then doesn't that defeat the point of having last names? Of course, the other alternative is rather incesty and belongs nowhere near a Wes Anderson production. What the cuss? Where'd this giant fence come from? What? You mean a giant fence that would have been clearly visible on your approach? Not to mention from your f***ing house? What's this lightning bolt? That could mean maybe this fence might be electric. Wait, does this mean they can't read English? But the newspaper was written in English. You can speak English. What the hell is going on here? I've never had a chicken empire before, so I'm grasping at straws here, but why would there be security fencing around building 32 and partially 33, but not building 34? Are the chickens in the high security area more desirable, thereby needing more protection? And if so, wouldn't Mr. Fox want those chickens instead? This is what you get when you let the screenwriter design your farm defenses instead of an actual security expert. Also, why wouldn't Mr. Fox and Kylie simply walk forward toward building 34 when they have a clear shot. We see them approach from the same direction they just avoided a moment ago. So how did they get through the barbed wire, tire spikes, and fence latch? I cannot fathom the type of breath control that must be obtained in order to individually propel a stacked blueberry from a straw without shooting all blueberries at once. I've been thinking about it for several minutes. And honestly, I'm a little sad that my life has forever changed knowing I do not know how to do this. All right, what's the master escape plan? There's no escape plan? Did you get high on blueberries and forget that part of the planning process? Even f***ing Ocean's 13 had an escape plan. F Mr. Fox and Kylie survived this. It's got a bogus farms tag around its ankle. Mr. Fox cut off the chicken's head and feet, plucked it, added fake tags to it, and forgot to take off the bogus farm tag? I call chick shit. What's the point of Bunce even being in this room if he isn't going to face the f***ing cameras and is wearing headphones? What about this trap was different enough to risk pulling it? What if it had come down right above him, just like the last time he pulled this shit? The center tagger lights a pine cone, chucks it over the basket, and the whack batter tries to hit the cedar stick off the cross rock. Then the twig runners dash back and forth until the pine cone burns out and the umpire calls hotbox. What is it with British authors creating these ridiculous games with impossible rules to follow? We've sent every damn one of the Harry Potter movies and even an episode of Ted Lasso, and I still haven't got a damn clue what a Quidditch or a soccer is. You can take your dumbass made-up game, throw them offside, and bludger them right in the hotbox. Does someone drag the trophy case out into the elements during practice, then push it back indoors to avoid long-term degrading exposure? What sort of assholes run this school? I have it in good authority that the insane display happening in this whack bat scene was inspired by watching the absolute f***ery that is itty bitty soccer league at the YMCA. Y'all are trespassing now. Illegally. Technically trespassing is not illegal. It is a civil wrongdoing against a landowner. Breaking and entering with intent to commit a felony, however, is. Now this might seem petty, but I would just hate to see this case get thrown out of animal court on a technicality. Also drinking on the job. Did the person in charge of Bogus's security also hire this asshole? The pattern part of my lizard brain wants the handles to face the same direction. Then this label would be on the wrong side of the jar. Fire the jar manufacturer, organize these in an aesthetically pleasing way, and... Oh, never mind, they're fixed. Why would he choose to hide at what is essentially eye level? Yeah, she's basically blind, but Fox didn't know that. Convenient animal-sized singular cider buggies are convenient. Any fox problems? Perhaps we ought to kill him. Vulpicide! Why? Why did you lie to me? Because I'm a wild animal. Animal, yes. Wild f no. They have meals at a table, listen to music on the fox equivalent of a Walkman, and they wear f***ing clothes. They're as wild as the Queen of England's f***ing corgis. This story is too predictable. Mrs. Fox would be fantastic at cinema sense. This chair works. Also, the casual way in which these three humans react to the tiny furniture, intricate living spaces, and miniature works of delicate art is a confusing addition to this story. If an advanced society of woodland creatures isn't a leap for them, wouldn't they also presume that caged birds they keep and kill for business are also speaking English and teaching school? Wouldn't they all be vegan? The diggers trench themselves in so deeply that, rumor says, the machinery is still stuck there to this day, which is ultimately the saddest part of this film because it turns out that the construction equipment is also sentient. Comics that have been in your underwear, and yes, 
house. We know Ash stowed his comic in his drawers because they left their house in the dead of night with nothing in hand but their instinct for survival. I get the cuteness of putting all these animals in human clothing, but everything so far has fit as if it's custom tailored. So why is Christofferson wearing human style sneakers but they don't fit his feet? Do you know how hard it is to be good at everything while wearing clown shoes? I hear that slap in the middle. Do you get how incredible this is? Very. Unbelievably so, in fact. Almost as if a work of fiction was unfolding before my eyes. Fox's 8, and the entire movie for that matter, has time for this improvised hoedown. This delightful scene of thievery comes to a crashing halt when you realize that these f***ers would have had to have dug through concrete to get through to the loot. We took everything. They took everything? Well, yeah, because your dumbass took all 108 of your employees and put them on sniper duty. I mean, why didn't you leave at least a few behind to guard the supplies so desperately needed by the animals you've trapped? If the first 80 snipers don't spot them, I doubt the next 28 will make a difference. If you thought figuring out Whackbat was complicated, try making sense of this sticky note organizational system we have around this trailer. The amount of painstaking work that has gone into sectioning and pinning is astounding. But what does any of it mean? Cider's great, but is he really so addicted that he has to have this semi-portable distillery on the go at all times. I used to smoke cigarettes, but I didn't carry around a curing tobacco plant and a grinder at the ready. Oh, I had extra smokes, just like this asshat would have extra jugs of juice. We beat those farmers, and now we're triumphantly eating their roasted chicken, their sizzling duck, their succulent turkey, their foie gras, the... Cider. In the big book of premature celebrations, this specific example is known as a golden eye. Also, my god, why are they using f***ing cider for this? Why not use water? It has to be cheaper, and it'll do exactly the same damn job. There's only one way out of this sewer, but the manhole covers closed and there's a station wagon parked on it. How can anyone identify the type of vehicle parked on top of the manhole cover if they can't open the manhole to get out and see the vehicle? Now that the cider flooding has stopped, can't they just go back the way they came in? Sure, this part here looks pretty steep, but down here it's just dirt and rock. We've seen them cover some crazy distances with their digging. Feels like the film needs this only possible escape manhole cover to be more important than it actually is. I think I have this thing where I need everybody to think I'm the greatest, the quote-unquote fantastic Mr. Fox. Roll credits! I think at the end of the day, I'm just... I know. We're wild animals. No, you are not! You wear a f***ing corduroy jacket! I love you, too. But I shouldn't have married you. Honesty! Well, I guess we should, uh, probably split into a certain number of groups and start doing something, right? Literally every game of Dungeons & Dragons ever! And I know this because D&D fans will not shut up about it. it. Here you are, man. A beaker of beans' finest secret cider. Fulfilling a dying rat's wish for a sip of cider with sludge slime. But in the end, he's just another dead rat in the garbage pail behind a Chinese restaurant. Jesus fox in Christ, there are kids present! Was that morbid ass eulogy really necessary? In a way, I'm almost glad that flood interrupted us because I don't like the toast I was giving. All of these people, not to mention his wife and f***ing son, could have died and this asshole is happy because it gives him a chance to redo his toast. And he's the hero of this f***ing story? And possibly the best landscape painter working on the scene today. Possibly the best? The woman just admitted she regrets marrying you, and the best compliment you can give her in this moment is that her painting skills put her in the possibly best category for talent? What a f***. I also see a room full of wild animals. No, you do not! They are not wild! Ah! I don't know your Latin name. I doubt they even had opossums in ancient Rome. That's didelphidiast. Thank you, movie, for reminding us of this incredibly diverse color palette of ochre in this movie. Scene does not begin with X amount of fox hours later because the movie doesn't want us to know that our heroic animals took an extra six days to watch paint dry before rescuing a kid. 28 pine cones fired, 22 targets hit. But how? Some of these shots were unbelievable. He's like a goddamn anti-stormtrooper. Also, unless foxes use a different method of counting up tallies, this chalkboard is a chalkboard of lies. This shows 10 hits, 11 maximum, if you count this stray tally, lies! That's on fire! Nothing says family friendly like three men with third degree burns to 70% of their bodies. <sighs> Also, maybe I could understand the news reporter or cameraman watching the creatures pile out of the manhole, wielding tiny pine cone bombs, but would they watch a fellow human burn alive without someone running in to extinguish them? Where did the little vehicle come from? Who made it? And if it's Mr. Fox's bike, why is it in the city easily stolen or discovered by humans? Well, I have a thing about thunder! Why? That's stupid! Phobia shaming! Yes, be extra sure not to drive all that heavy farm machinery that beagles are so famous for operating. You two go ahead while I distract him. Or you could f***ing climb away with him as well. It's not like he can follow you up there. Can you give me a karate lesson real quick? But why trust Christofferson for aid when the dumbass could easily lift his thumbs, loop them beneath his blindfold, and remove it in order to use his eyes to help guide Ash? Who would have thought Tweed would have such impressive fire retardant qualities? Oddly, this scene is perfectly sized for a small fox rather than a human. I wonder what people would need with a tiny rake and even smaller keys. Yeah! 
this works. Look at this gloriously convenient ramp of bullshittery that has no damn right to be here. Does it give a damn, I hear you ask? Oh, you hear it cry in return as it appears out of fucking nowhere to save the day with its serendipitous presence. Hey, Dee. Bring us a ladder, please. Okay, a ladder makes sense, but may I suggest mentioning the rabbit beagle that may hinder the safe operation of said ladder? Where did he come from? Better question, how do you see the wolf, considering everyone was looking to the rear and not to the side? To be clear, the animals are stuck in the sewer, but are also able to retrieve painting supplies and continue to update the Gazette with news about their subterranean life. In other words, do not feel bad for them. They have choices to be free, but decide to stay oppressed. Newspaper recipes that call for vanilla in the body of the recipe, but do not list vanilla in the ingredients list can kiss my recipe-loving ass. Foxy, it's filthy. On the one hand, Mrs. Fox is concerned about something being filthy. On the other, she seems fine with her husband sporting a rotting tail pinned to his ass. I am confused. There's a whole enormous, glorious, gigantic supermarket up here. And they close early on weekends. You really are kind of a quote-unquote fantastic fox. Hold your whiskers there, people. Let's limit the complimentary alliterative adjectives for a second while we remember that this foxy f*** has turned an entire community of animals into refugees. This chap has ruined multiple families' lives and almost got a fair few of them killed. Okay, the supermarket provides them with a new source of food and water, but they all still live in a f***ing sewer, all because he couldn't keep his kleptomania in check. Also, I find it hard to believe that any grocery store would close early on the weekend, since most people shop during the weekend. Kids-sized shopping carts in full-size supermarkets. Yes, these crackles are made of synthetic goose and these giblets come from artificial squab and even these apples look fake but at least they've got stars on them walmart's weak explanation of their lackluster great value brand somehow makes its way into the script oh son of a bitch you shot me in the ass 